the bike literally just went right through my wheel and my fork while I was on it. Just completely just sawed right through it. My name is Amber Nieben and I was on this bike when this happened. It was the 2010 Giro d'Italia. We were staged the second to last stage and I was racing with the US national team. Mara Abbott was about to win her first Giro d'Italia. And my, my teammate, Amanda Mill and I were at the front of the bunch. I think it was after the first main climb of the day, descending down a straight road, super straight, nothing technical about it, but really steep. And we were lined up. Amanda was right in front of me. I was maybe fifth person in line of the Peloton. And we were going maybe 40 miles an hour, 40, 50 miles an hour, just screaming downhill. And next thing you know, there was this little tiny Spanish rider that came up the side and I caught her out of the corner of my eye. And as she went by me, she came really in tight on Amanda and just took Amanda down. So I don't know if it was her leg or arm, but next thing I know, Amanda, the Spanish girl, are going across the road, bodies across the road, bikes across the road. It was like slow motion. So I just remember thinking, I can't go left, there's a bike. I can't go right, there's bodies. And I'm pretty sure I can't bunny hop that because it was, I mean, pretty far off the ground. Next thing I know, I'm lying on the ground, looking up at two medics, looking up at Amanda. And she's like, Amber, Amber, are you gonna go? Are you gonna go? And I was just like, no. <laughs> it's like one of the few times I've had to say no. Um, but my body was just screaming pain from my, from my collarbone area. Um, I really wasn't sure what was going on. I was awake and aware, um, but in a ton of pain. And so she ends up going. I'm there with the Italian ambulance, I guess you could call it. They slap me onto this um, wooden board. Um, throw me into the ambulance. Remember, my, my collarbone shattered at this point, so it's like four pieces. Um, I'm on this wooden board, into the back of this ambulance, and just, you know, the road's not smooth, bouncing all the way down the, the mountain. Um, next thing I know, he's trying to pump morphine into me, and I was like, no, no, no morphine. I, I didn't want him to, I, they didn't speak English. I didn't know what was going on. If they fill me up with morphine, there's no way I'm ever gonna know where I'm at or what's going on. So. It's, Turn that down, still in tons of pain. We finally get to this, um, what I thought was an emergency room. So they lug me out of the ambulance. And again, I mean, it's just like no mercy, no care for me and what I was feeling. They were just throwing me around on this board and pull me out, take me in, throw me onto a table. And then they come back out and they're like, there's no x-ray machines in here. And I was like, how do you have an emergency room with no x-ray machines? So pack me back into the ambulance and we drive. I don't know how long we drove for. It felt like hours, but it, maybe it was 30 minutes. I don't know. I still to this day don't know where I was or what hospital I was in, but we end up in another hospital that maybe had like three people in it. It seemed like it was completely empty, just tons of white walls. I remember being on a gurney in the hallway. Like they wheeled me in and left me in this hallway. Again, it felt like eternity. It felt like an hour and a half. Um, finally, somebody came out and wheeled me into another room that had um, the x-ray machines in it. And his um, nurse partner came in to help. They had to get my jersey off to be able to take the x-ray. And she is just yanking on my jersey. And remember, my collarbone's in multiple pieces at this point. And I said, ouch, that hurts. And she looked at me and she said, shut up. And I was like, you're kidding me. This is, this is like a medical person. They don't, they're, not, they're pretending like they don't speak English if they do speak English. Um, and I'm just in excruciating pain. And it was just like, I, are, you're telling me to shut up? Anyway, so I just, I looked at her and I'm like, scissors, can you cut it? Can you cut it off? And so the guy went and got scissors and cut off my jersey, cut off everything. So then they proceed to just leave me laying naked on the gurney in the middle of this room. I still, again, don't know where I'm at, don't know really what's going on. Um, and the guy came back and I was like, can I have a sheet? So he, he covered me and then they left again. Um, I don't know how long just left in this room. Um, eventually they come back and they wheel me into another 
another area where there was actually a kinder doctor who spoke a little bit of English. And she said to me, she said, you know, we need to do a scan of your insides, make sure everything's okay. And I said, you know, I got to pee. It's been hours since the race at this point. And I really had to pee. And um, she's like, no, no, it's good. It's good if you have a little fluid in your, in your insides because then, then she can see with her ultrasound better. So I said, okay. Um, so she goes through all of getting me set up and everything and she starts doing her ultrasound and she stops. And in her broken English, she looks at me with a big smile on her face. She's like, you have to pee. And I was like, I told you. So she said, okay. She, then she needed me to pee first before she could actually do the scan. So I do that, take care of things with a bedpan, which was a first for me. She comes back, scans me, and thankfully um, the insides were okay. So she let me go back into the other room where there was nobody. Um, and again, I was just left there for a while. And eventually a doctor came with a big x-ray, like old school x-ray, and he helped no joke, takes the x-ray and just holds it up in the room. Not, didn't put it on a wall light or anything, just holds it up. And he looked at me and he goes broken. And then he just strapped me up with a butterfly strap and sent me on my way. And I couldn't believe it. So then, I mean, I eventually was in the team car with our mechanic who was the most crazy driver ever and having to withstand an hour and a half of driving back to um, wherever we were. I still, to this day, again, I don't know where I was in Italy. It was near the Stelvio though. So it was up in Northern Italy and uh, make it back and eventually fly home and have surgery and have plate and screws put in. So it was a pretty crazy adventure. So at that point I was pretty beaten and broken, but I was still ready to keep persevering. So all good.